Well, hey, <lacht> Silly Gurke ist mal wieder hier am Start auf Laser Gurkenland mit der Domain Silly Whoops, Silly Hoon. Oh mein Gott, ich kann nicht tippen. Sillyhoon.com oder alternativ der IP 149.2.127.134 und äh, ich schreibe immer. Oh mein Gott. So. Ähm, genau, ist der gratis erreichbare Anarchie-Server ohne Regeln und ohne Spieler. Deswegen gibt es hier eine Dauerwerbesendung über, was weiß ich, fast schon 40 Folgen oder so. Und wir ähm, schauen mal wieder einen Talk von Aaron Jones, unserem alten Police-Friend von dem Channel Brian Clough. Und diesmal den Talk Introduction. To Tales. <coughs> so, at the conclusion of this course, students will be able to identify what Tales OS is. We're going to identify at least one reason you may wish to use Tales OS. We're going to explain how Tales OS works. We're going to describe at least one method to install Tales OS. And we're going to describe a security event in relation to Tales OS. What's Tales? What is Tales? For anybody who doesn't know what Tales is, it's an operating system. Uh, it advertises itself as a live operating system. And essentially what that means is, is that you can run this operating system without installing it on actual computing hardware. You keep it on a USB drive, you can use USB, and you can use the operating system directly from USB. Anybody in this room could probably install Ubuntu or Arch or any of these other operating systems. And generally you boot from nowadays, you boot from a USB drive, and upon booting from USB drive, it often will drop you into what's a trial of the OS. You see this with Manjaro. And you can use that operating system live without doing any kind of changes to the actual hard drive of the system. Okay. Now, the idea behind Tails is that using and installing this allows you access easy access to tools that provide you the ability to anonymously surf the internet, to circumvent censorship, to leave no trace, or if you feel the need to, Now, the Tales Project is not really different from the other operating systems you'll find, except for the one condition that you can make the call before, or is designed to start. Operating. Once you get this, if you 
very good at it, and it's very fast. But there are examples, countless examples of people traveling to London overseas, leaving their computer alone for what they felt was a very, very short amount of time, and then finding out very quickly that their hardware could be compromised by somebody who used very, very high speed to add things to the rest of the system. And of course, you've all heard about people coming in from overseas to go to DEF CON, and then they get their laptop taken away for 45 minutes. And then when the laptop comes back, they go to all the people and done. People have gained access to the system and the blog and so on and so forth. We have countless of people who have gained that they come from the people that have access to the system. So all of these tools are easy to get a hold of, and they very, very easily handle the idea behind it. Because once you have access to physical hardware, you're done. Uh, let's talk about Dread Fire Robbers for a second. Because you need to figure out where you're located. Dread Fire Robbers is. Der, literally, jeder talk from them is the same. So, Silk Road guy, Dread Fire Robbers, takes his laptop. Pretty good on operational security, sort of. Uh, for a guy who probably learned this stuff in the it was okay. He would take his system, put it next to the would always take the library, and well, eventually they tried to go down. We figured out what library he was at, uh, I think it was a coffee shop or something. He's sitting there, he's on the computer, a couple comes in, a couple meet him, they stage a fight between the party with each other, and then uh, one of them bumps over the table, grabs his laptop, and takes off like all that out of the well, slamming on the down arrow to make sure that the computer doesn't fall. That's how they gain access to the computer. Life goals. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, again, going back to the whole Saturday night session, you can build a live operating system. Everybody can build a live operating system. There's a, any number of Linux distributions you can go on to the tool right now and type in Arch Linux live distribution build help. And you will be able to find detailed instructions on how to do this and you can set up your own copy of Tails. Pretty easy. Uh, I feel like it makes sense on something like this in both world because the more information that you have, the better how it seems like it operates, the more likely it is to find it. Now, most people who go, well, it's already pre-built, so why would you do this? Well, that's not the right? Raise that, raise your hand, please, if you have read every line in the line of Every line. And I know some of these faces in here. I've asked this question before. I see that you all haven't read it yet. Nope. If you have not read every line in the Linux kernel, how do you know the Linux kernel? Okay, good. I'm glad that you're working on it. Fantastic. Stuck. You all have to hurry, though, because they change it pretty regularly. Um, if you don't have a graph Ooh. of what it is that you're working on, Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, baby, that's, that's, that's what we are looking what, for. There's videos online of, on YouTube of Linus Torvalds getting up, and they ask him, has anybody ever approached you to add a backdoor to Linux? Do you think there's a backdoor in Linux? And he goes, no, and laughs about it. 
I've got videos of it on my webpage. You can go to YouTube. You can look it up. So if you don't think that this stuff has issues with it somewhere, it probably does. I'll just tell you right now. Considering the fact that certain individuals have gotten up and talked about this stuff, it's a good idea to keep it in mind. And if you don't feel confident enough to create your own live clinic, learn how to make your own live distribution, and then you can switch over to Facebook. And I also recommend sitting there and using tools like uh, Firechart on your network while you do it. Pay attention to what's going on, how it works, what it's doing, who it's communicating with, how. Pay attention to that data. So how do we install this thing? Well, you got two options. And I'm going to be a total loser here. I am going to recommend Etcher. I think Etcher's fine. I don't care. There's going to be people who tell you don't. And Etcher doesn't like my browser. And that's fine. But Etcher is a really, really easy, quick way to take an ISO, pick an SD card or a USB drive, and just burn to it. It works fine. Some people don't like it. Whatever. I don't have time. Uh, Get Etcher, download Tails, turn the OS to, OS to a USB drive or a... Ah, uh, dafür hat er wieder keine Zeit. Ah, ja, verstehe, uh, verstehe. Ah, ja, verstehe. You take a really, really small SD card, and then you put it in your shoe. And you don't have to worry about losing it. I'm not kidding. Because the most important part of using something like this is what? Physical security. Right? You just talked about that. So the physical security part, you can go on Amazon, you can buy yourself a pair of socks that on the inside, people use it for dope. They, they have little zippers on the inside. You can use it for a USB card. And then you wash it, and then you get to roll your own OS again. So it's called Craft. All right? Uh, the other thing that you can do is create a virtual machine with no hard drive, and then boot from the ISO into a virtual machine if you want to practice with it. It's a good way to learn. And it'll come up, and it'll give you a huge warning. It'll Vielleicht say, sollte ich nicht beide Fortune Pigaxes mitnehmen. So nicht so klug. Well, you can add JavaScript and you don't do it. 
Ja, vier Sicherheitslücken bei E-Links, weil wirklich niemand in E-Links nach Sicherheitslücken sucht. Ich habe nie von E-Links gehört. Firefox ist halt größer, das muss man auch dazu sagen. Das haben wir doch schon im anderen Talk gesehen, oder? Oh, ich finde eh wieder nicht mehr zurück, oder? Tails ist so sneaky, wieso bekommt man das so stark mit? Geschichte schon wieder. Jesus, okay, ich glaube, das war echt der letzte Talk von Brian Clough. Aber ich glaube, das haben wir eh alle gesehen.
That's all metadata. That, what does that tell you? Somebody was connected to Tor at the exact same time that this crime was being committed. And even though we don't know for a fact that it's him, now we know a location. We have somebody who's suspicious. So we have a suspect, right? And we have enough information here for us to go over there and knock on the door and say, hey, homeboy, what were you doing on your computer at that time? And of course, it came. A bunch of police officers show up at your door. And they said, what are you doing? And he goes, dumb stuff. Okay, well, come with us. You're done. So using a tool like Tor does not function if you do not know how to use it. And most people do not know how to use it. They just don't. They're never going to use it correctly. And it's never going to provide the kind of protection or the, the ability to anonymize your traffic like you might think that it would. Because for the vast majority of people, they're going to jump on Tor when they do bad things. And when they're done doing bad things, they jump off. So if the only time that you're doing bad things is when you're on tour, it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on. It's all metadata. So don't expect Tails to provide any additional protection over a local copy of tour unless you're ready to change your method of searching the internet drastically. You cannot mix identity. If you jump on tour and you go log into Facebook, we know who you are because we have your Facebook login. It does not function that way. Your entire method of using the internet has to be completely different than what it would normally be for any of this to have any effectiveness beyond defending yourself from a country that does not have access to that data. Yes, if you're out there in Syria in the middle of this civil war and you're using Tor, well, guess what? Potentially somebody's going to find out that you're on Tor. But in general, they're not going to be able to go and access the data in Twitter to find out that you were using Twitter. But here within the United States, yes, we can figure it out. And we can get enough information, metadata, to be able to put together, okay, an individual keeps logging into Twitter at this time, from this time to this time, using Tor from this time to this time, so we can make an expectation that they're connected. And that goes all the way back to nation state actors having the capability monitor enough of the internet at one time to be able to put all of that data together. Which if you go to the actual Tails webpage, they do talk about that as a potential threat vector that can affect Tails users. So a group as large as the United States who has the ability to exert influence on the main eight service providers who provide the actual backbone for the entire world, only eight companies. And I believe there's only two in the United States so if you're within the United States and you're using those tools, there's only two companies that you have to go into and go, give us that data to. That makes it much simpler, which is how that works. So, how do we enhance security with Tails? Do not mix identities with Tails. You can't. Once you start mixing identities and changing how things operate, if you're not very, very careful, you're just going to reveal who you are anyway. Do not use Tails or Tor from your home network. Once you start connecting to Tor and Tails from your home network, then they know you're using it. And your home network is part of that dragnet. It's that easy. Do not use compromised hardware. You probably should not have to say that, but if you don't physically have the ability to review your hardware, then you cannot guarantee that that hardware is safe. And if you leave that hardware unsafe, you can almost guarantee that that hardware will become unsafe. Do not expect privacy from nation state level attacks. It's just not there. There's only a handful of companies that provide the entire internet for the whole world. It's very, very easy to triangulate where these systems are. Who was running the world's largest child pornography webpage Leon, uh, just last year? Whoa. That's correct. Australia. Well, Australia. Australia. It was Australia. But that general area. Who was running the second biggest child pornography ring in the entire world? They were the first up until Australia decided to just mm. kick them right off the edge. Who was the first? FBI. So if you want to know what groups were moving child porn, both of these nation level attackers located these companies, took them over, and the thing that chaps my ass is once those groups took over, the kitty corner said that they knew something was wrong because the servers were so responsive. 
They became better. They were better run. Things became more responsive. It was easier to get their fix. And that's when they said, oh shit, something's wrong. And a whole bunch of them fell off because the, the, the clowns that were running it beforehand, they knew that they were not that good. They weren't good enough to do that. But the FBI and, and Australia decided to step the game up and make the web pages better. Now we can get into a real big thing here where I get real pissed off about what's called re-victimization. Re-victimization, if you're not familiar with the law enforcement term, is where you have a person and they've been victimized, and then because you have taken pictures or images or so on and so forth, video, uh, then every time you serve that up to somebody, you are removing that person's capability or ability to have a decision of what's going on in their life. They're being re-victimized over and over and over again. So, all that re-victimization that was going on, what did that earn us? Not a whole hell of a lot, because they didn't want to talk at the FBI about what tools and techniques they used. So when these guys went to court after they got arrested, the FBI said, okay, you're under arrest. And those guys said, okay, tell us how you broke four. And the FBI said, well, hell no, we're not going to say that. And so the judge just started throwing the cases out. So they victimized children for several months and then threw the case down because they didn't want to tell anybody how they busted them. And at that point, that's when I get pissed off because that's not how you operate, or at least I don't think you should. Personal opinion, some people are going to disagree with me, and I'm sure somebody's going to say, well, at least we shut it down. But you could have shut it down a lot earlier than that, than allowing these people to continue doing what they were doing, and then for no tangible benefit other than to add them ja gut, das wusste man ja vorher nicht, wie gut das klappt. Written by humans. <laughs> Kevin yeah, Mitnick style. Well, then I'll have the homeless guy go out and he'll buy the card with the cash, and then he's going to go buy my VPN. And then what happens when they realize that, hey, we kind of know all the homeless people, and they go pick that guy up, and they go, oh, yeah, that guy right over there, he asked me to do it. And so on and so forth. People try to make it too complicated. Uh, and then in addition to that, most of these, most of the, the places that you're going to be able to get a VPN from, everybody knows that when it says you don't records. Mm -hmm. They don't keep records until the FBI shows up and then you better believe they keep records. Uh, hide my ass. Everybody knows hide, hide my ass VPN. And who were they hooked up with? Olsec. Anonymous. Yeah. Okay. So Anonymous decided they were going to use hide my ass VPN and start using it. They're doing all their stuff. And then the FBI said, hey, we need the records the Hide My Ass VPN. And Hide My Ass said, we don't keep records. You can see it right on our webpage. It says no records. And the FBI said, so you keep records, and we know you do, and you're going to give them to us or else. And you know what they did? They said, oh, those records. And they went and got the records and they handed them over. <laughs> so when they tell you we don't keep records, that it's not true. There's not a single VPN that doesn't Hä, hey, das ist sneaky mit dem Redstone, das wusste ich gar nicht, dann kann man das nicht mehr... Oh yeah. Und so sieht man das ja nicht mehr. Tails OS is 
an operating system that is programmed with a number of tools that allow users to connect to the internet over Tor without saving any information to a hard drive for later retrieval. Okay. Now, mind you, some of these will look at the RAM and they will write to RAM. And sometimes they will do swap. And that's, again, why I told you about they'll try to grab the laptop. They'll have the fight in front of you. So remember, <coughs> what I usually tell people is if the big couple in front of you starts having a tip, or the guy from China in the giant coat with the hat tucked down starts walking slowly towards you, or the real pretty girl in the bikini walks up and starts reaching towards your laptop, it's not because she thinks your stickers are cool. Okay? Because they need access to that system and they need it live so that they can gather information from you. Because once you turn it all off, it's just sitting there long enough and everything's lost. Now, Tails OS is normally installed on a USB thumb drive with a live operating system, and that's their recommended method. Easy as that. And Tails OS has and does sometimes suffer from zero-day exploits, and this has caused much debate on when and how these issues should, re should be reported. They talk about it all the time. <coughs> Somebody will get up and they'll say, I broke Tor. And that becomes their business claim to fame, is that they broke Tor. And it's a total lie. They found a JavaScript exploit that they can run in the Tor browser based on Firefox. And that's what they did. But just the sheer fact that you can use that tool in combination with JavaScript, and that they often will tell you that you should be using JavaScript with Tor, that should tell you. That should be a massive red flag for anybody in here. When Freenet says the only thing we're going to serve you is HTML and some CSS, and you cannot have JavaScript over our tool, that tells me something on how they approach the tool, as opposed to the Tor browser with their system saying you should use JavaScript because it makes you look like a Now, Tails is a great tool for individuals who do not have the technical skills necessary or the time to set up and deploy more securely if you want to experiment with tools. Okay? Now, you can use Tails in combination with good operational security and smart behavior to provide maximum level of anonymity online. But, again, you have to change the method of using the computer. You have to change your behavior. You have to change what account you use. You are changing identity every time you use the system and you have to keep them separate or it does not work. Final recommendation. Use Linux. Use Freenet. And I feel bad because I work at a police department and we're in a police department and I keep saying use Freenet and I'm sure people are going ha, you're not going to get me. But <laughs> I really do think that Freenet is probably the best choice. I use Freenet in combination with uh, e-link so I never load images, I never load uh, and I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's fast. It works great for me. Wofür verwendet er das denn? There's tons and tons of people who just do microblogging on Freenet. And yeah. they all have the most insane, crazy stories. It's a great tool. Love Freenet. Contribute to some okay. sort of privacy enhancing project. I don't care if you want to pick, but pick one and start contributing to something. I recommend Freenet, though. They need people. They need developers. So if you're a software developer or a coder or you can work on Python because the web page is written in Python, Python 2, uh, if you can do any of that stuff, go work with them. Find a way to contribute. Give back to them. If you're a coder or a software developer okay, or you can I write Python. GG, <laughs> shots fired. I tell my students, some of them have never coded before in their life, and I tell them, find some of these projects that have been worked on by Europeans and go in there and fix their English. All you have to do is fork it, look at their documentation, and change it so it's not in bad English, make it easy to read, oh, and then submit it. And that is a basic, simple method to make fixes and to contribute without you having to do any kind of coding or anything like that. As long as you can use GitHub or GitLab, you're good to go. You're going to you start contributing today. Not a single person in this room cannot do Uh, develop Except you're European, your then your English sucks. <laughs> Nothing works without a network. That's how it functions. If you're not networked,
networking, so you're not building relationships and figuring out how these things work, working with these groups, you're failing at security. You are. Because those, that's where the changes are being made. They're not all here, they're out. So you need to network. And again, final, final piece, if nothing else, you don't listen to any of this other stuff, contribute to an open source project, find something. Maybe the question is, why do I like Linux over Windows or over Mac, right? Because that's kind of our three main choices until we get into something like what? Pony OS, Temple or, OS. Uh, potentially Temple OS. <laughs> that's, our, that's our pick, right? Like FreeBSD. Or, or OpenBSD. So you've got the BSDs, you've got Linux, you've got the, the guy here in Arizona who made Temple OS. <laughs> Now, is Linux know. private? Probably not. Are there back doors in it? Linus Torvalds said probably. So all these different groups know that every single one of them is broken. But I know for a fact that Windows has a history of abusing its users. I don't like Windows. I don't like the way that Microsoft does business. I disagree with their uh, decision-making process of uh, grabbing onto something, enhancing it, using their own stuff pulling it out of open source mm. and then extinguishing to get rid of it. It's it a process that they follow with software all over the world to destroy things that they don't like. Uh, in addition to that, you can look at the NSA keys. And that's never been resolved. So Windows had a situation with the NSA keys, the NSA keys get leaked. Uh, and then a developer just recently leaked a whole bunch of hard-coded backdoors in Windows. And then they had to go in and make a bunch of so I know that, in general, all computing sucks. If we could go back to anything, we could go back to Commodore 64. That's what I want. Turn on the computer, use it, and if anything breaks, turn it off and flip it right back on, and we're up and running all over again. Like, that's, that would be my dream. If we could go back to anything, you give me Gophers, you give me BBSs, you give me Commodores, and I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm gold. That's it. I don't need anything else. I'm happy. But it's never going to return to that. And with the tool set that we do have, essentially all of it sucks. Everything sucks. But Linux sucks for me, as far as I know. And I, I'm happy contributing to open source projects with other people who have generally the same ideas and towards security, towards okay. trying to do the As ob's this echt bringt, mit dem DS rumzukörben. I don't know. But that's what I like. I ich like habe nur ein bisschen Schiss vor Lava, like muss ich sagen. Deswegen mache ich das. Why you all are in the body, right? <gasps> oh, what is going on? Anything else that you decided to be here, learning about operations. Okay, that's right, yes. Learning about some of those tools that are being used. And for whatever reason, that's your reason, but undoubtedly, every single person here is connected to Linux. Every single one of us. I mean, it's Ooh, baby. Level 30. So every single person here probably has the same thought process. How people can treat each other and so on and so forth. So it's as much a culture as it is an operating system. It's not just a tool, it's a, it's a way of life, as nerdy as that sounds. So that's why I like Linux. Anything else? No? Well, then took up two hours of your time. I want to
tell you all thank you very much for coming out here and this community. And I hope it's some small party and maybe this helped you. I hope it assist you in, in some way. And if there's ever anything that we can do for you here, please let us know how to do it. So thank you all very much. All right, das war Aaron Jones, Introduction to Tales, auf dem Channel Brian Clough. Ich bin euer Host Silly Gurke auf dem gratis erreichbaren Minecraft-Server Laserguckenland mit der IP 19.9.202.1.7.134 oder alternativ mit der Domain sillyhoon.com. Das war's mit dieser Dauerwerbesendung und wir sehen uns in der nächsten.